So today I'm going to do a video on an MCAT biology passage. I'm just going to kind of walk you guys through the thought process that I would use um, in order to get through these passages. And I think um, this method really did help me retain um, the content of the passages a little bit more. The more I practiced this method, the more quickly I was getting through passages, which was a big issue for me when I first started studying. So um, the passage I'll be using today is from Khan Academy. It's from the MCAT section under Biological and Biochemical Foundations of Living Systems passages. All right, so I'm kind of just going to read through this passage and then answer the questions with you guys. Um, and as I'm going through, I'm just going to explain my thought process. The whole um, point behind this method is to keep yourself engaged and actively read the passage so that not only do you understand, but you're going to be able to remember where certain pieces of information are in the passage so that when you're answering questions, you and let's say you have to refer back to the passage, you'll, you won't you will have to keep scrolling to be like, where was that part where they mentioned this? You'll remember because you're um, actively reading and you'll kind of get a spatial memory a little bit. Um, and then the last thing that this method really helps with is you kind of start anticipating what questions they'll ask. Getting that thought process going will really help you um, once you see the question, it'll help you answer them more quickly. And um, the more you do this, the more the, the better you'll get at anticipating what types of questions they're going to ask you. So um, here we go. I'm just going to read through it. So let's start with the first paragraph. All right, so I always like to pause after I read a, about a paragraph just to make sure that I knew what I read and to see if there was any key points in there or any words I didn't know, stuff like that. So for this paragraph, this was really just an introduction. I didn't really see anything that was too important, um, you know, just kind of introducing the topic. So we're going to leave it be uh, for now, and let's move on to the figure. Uh, it looks like renin is helping to convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1, and ACE, which we're going to assume is an enzyme, and they tell us that um, later in the passage, helps convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, which is then going to bind to um, certain receptors, one of which is going to signal the release of aldosterone. So when I'm looking through just this part, I want to say to myself, okay, this is something that I should know from studying my content, what the role of aldosterone is, in, um, you know, I guess this title gives it away, blood pressure, but you should also kind of know that aldosterone is a big signal for um, blood pressure questions on the MCAT. So I would ask myself, what's its role in, in increasing or decreasing blood pressure? And if you studied and you know the answer to this, you know that aldosterone inc increases blood pressure. So I would just make note of that. Then let's just finish up this figure. Um, ACE also... Um, helps break down this molecule to make it inactive. Now, off the top of my head, I wouldn't really know what this molecule does, so I would kind of make note of that and look out for if they're going to tell me what it does in the passage. So let's continue. So I would pause here and realize that they just told us a really important piece of information that maybe you already knew or maybe you didn't. Um, that ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure. That's something that I'm going to keep in mind. And if you think about it, it does make sense because we know aldosterone increases blood pressure. And if you block this conversion with an inhibitor, then you won't be able to have angiotensin 2 bind to the receptor and then release aldosterone. So actually, we got lucky. The passage told us what this molecule did, which I would have needed them to because off the top of my head, I know when I was studying, I probably didn't have that in my knowledge. Um, and so basically it's saying it's a vasodilating peptide. And so that's another thing I would pause myself and say, okay, vasodilation, what does that normally do to blood pressure? And we would say, okay, it decreases blood pressure. And then if we want to just confirm, you know, make this make a little more sense to us, 
That makes sense because an ACE inhibitor lowers blood pressure and bradykinin, since it's a vasodilator, it also lowers blood pressure, but it's often broken down, right? So if it's if bradykinin is broken down, it can't um, it can no longer lower blood pressure. But since ACE inhibitors prevent this breakdown, they're also kind of lowering blood pressure in another way by allowing this molecule to stay in its active form and act as a vasodilator. All right, so we learned a lot of good stuff. We know ACE inhibitors lower blood pressure. We know they do this through these two mechanisms. And we learned that bradykinin is a vasodilating peptide. So let's go on to the next paragraph. All right, so really the most important thing that was introduced in this paragraph would be our receptor blockers and direct renin inhibitors. And I would go up, back up and just note that when you block these receptors, you're also going to have trouble releasing aldosterone Therefore, you're going to have a decrease in blood pressure. And if you block um, or inhibit renin directly, that's also going to kind of prevent the rest of this pathway from going through. So that's just good. They just introduced a few different ways that we can lower blood pressure. So basically, they're talking about a study. Um, and I know a common mistake that I would make is if I wasn't actively reading and I didn't note the angiotensin receptor blockers that we just noted before, which they abbreviated ARB, I would have gotten to this paragraph and saw ARB and would have no idea what they were talking about. I would have completely forgotten. Um, but because I took a little moment in my brain to acknowledge this, when I got to the abbreviation, I didn't waste time. I knew exactly what they were talking about, um, these receptor blockers. So the, the most important part about this is just knowing that we're going to see what the effects of these um, drugs slash molecules are on glucose transport. So let's scroll down and look at this figure. We need to know that vehicle treated, which pops up three times, is a control. That's super important for the, how we're going to interpret this. And that um, the minus sign is in the absence of ins insulin, and the plus sign is in the presence of insulin, and the delta sign is um, the net increase. Okay? Also, the star is significant, but that's probably something you might already know just from other classes you've taken. Another important thing to read is what are we measuring here? So I would pause for a moment and say to myself, all right, what would high levels of glucose uptake mean? So just for general purposes and for our brains, we're going to tell ourselves that high glucose uptake, so high numbers up here, are going to represent decreased insulin resistance and lower numbers would be a higher insulin resistance. All right, so now let's look at this. I think it's kind of more important to see the change because I think that's the easiest one to interpret here, in my opinion. Um, so let's see, the control um, is here. And the one with the ACE inhibitor is this one. And we're noticing that with the ACE inhibitor, glucose uptake increased. So we can say we just made a relationship and we can kind of say, so this, compared to the control, the ACE inhibitor actually decreased the insulin resistance a little bit. Um, there's more glucose uptake with this molecule as opposed to without it in the control group. And now let's look at the receptor blocker. So there's no star, so it wasn't very significant. Um, so we can just note that. All right, let's read the last paragraph before answering the questions. All right, so important thing about this paragraph is that this drug, antihypertensive, so it's going to lower blood pressure. And it's through direct inhibition of renin. That's, that's, I think, very important. I can imagine a question coming up on that. So let's go to our questions. And just so that we know, um, 
On the MCAT, you're going to have passage-based questions, and you're going to have discrete questions that, like, technically you probably didn't even need the passage for. And then you're going to have a combination where you need maybe one detail from the passage, but then you also need one detail from content that you should have, you know, studied without the passage. So here we go. Let's read the first question. This is kind of like a discrete question. You probably should be able to answer this without the passage. And actually, the passage didn't really um, help you out too much with this. But the good news is we already said in our brain what aldosterone does to blood pressure, right? So this question should be a breeze. We know that it increases it. So immediately we can elimit, eliminate um, these two decrease options. Now we have... Um, either adrenal glands it's produced or the hypo hypothalamus. And we should know, um, based on our content, that it's the adrenal glands. So here we go. We're going to check our answer, and we got it right. So let's go to the next question. They're talking about drug X. Now, we spend a lot of time on the passage. We should know what portion of the passage is drug X in. Well, it's right here. We talked about that at the end, right? So we should note that we, if we need to refer back, it's in this paragraph. So it's asking which um, treatment group will kind of look similar to what drug X would look like. So we have to remember what drug X did. Drug X was antihypertensive and it lowered blood pressure. And this is super important through direct inhibition of renin. All right, so let's... We, we have our foundation. Let's kind of just read through the choices. So let's think about this. This is a receptor blocker. And it's basically saying receptor blockers do not inhibit the degradation of bradykinin. So let's go up. Uh, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Something that's going to work down here and block these receptors is going to affect aldosterone. It's not really going to affect bradykinin. Um, something that acts on renin directly also really isn't going to impact bradykinin because renin isn't acting on bradykinin. So that is actually accurate. Both of those are similar. Since drug X acts on renin to inhibit it, um, and the receptor blockers work down here, they're both kind of separate from bradykinin. So let's pick this, and that one happened to be right. Let's do the next one. So again, this would be a content question. You really don't need the uh, passage for this. This system, we know it acts to release aldosterone. Now we asked ourselves early on in the passage, what does aldosterone do to blood pressure? we know it um, increases blood pressure. So this system works to increase blood pressure through aldosterone. Common sense tells us that um, probably lower blood pressure would activate the system. So before reading any of the choices, we kind of know the answer is decreased blood pressure, and there it is. Still read the other choices, and you know they'll kind of cancel themselves out once you read them, but that's a nice quick way to answer this question because we already thought about it. All right, so this next question, they make it a little confusing the way they word it. So for questions like this, it's always better for me to kind of come up with my answer before I even read the choices so that they can't confuse me. So let's see, Captor Pro is the one that they want us to look at and they want us to kind of make some sort of association with what kind of effect does Captopril have on these insulin-resistant muscles. And if you remember, early on in the video when we were looking at this figure, we made an assumption. We said if glucose uptake is high, that means the insulin resistance is probably lower because your body's responding to the insulin in order to uptake that glucose. So basically, we kind of know that Captopril helps us uptake glucose a little bit better and it makes the resistance to insulin a little bit less. So did we just say that the um, response was lower or higher? I think when we answered the question, we said that Captopril is actually helping the body respond a little bit better to insulin because it's showing that gl more glucose is being um, 
taken up. So choice D is looking pretty good, but let's just in case, I don't know, this one really confused me, so I'm just going to kind of explain it one more time. Um, since we have a higher glucose uptake from captopril, we're kind of saying that the glucose resistance is a little lower, which means that in a way, your body is responding to the insulin a little bit, um, you know, better. It's responding in a way that's allowing it to um, take up more glucose. So it's at, your body is actually showing an increase in its response to insulin, right? So I think this is actually the choice we're going to go with. And it's correct. So this is one of those combined questions. Um, you know, obviously, this isn't a discrete question because we're not going to know what captopril does if we didn't understand the passage correctly. Um, but so we now know that captopril is an ACE inhibitor. So it is going to decrease blood pressure. So basically, now we can rephrase the question and say, um, you know, with respect to these two factors, what changes in the heart are expected after a decrease in blood pressure? So here comes our knowledge of content. You know, in order to answer this question, we need to kind of know the relationship between stroke volume and cardiac output and blood pressure. So we should know that cardiac output is actually stroke volume um, times heart rate. And if you know that relationship, you'll be able to choose C. And let's see, that's the answer. So basically, the point of this method, like I said in the beginning, is just to kind of keep yourself actively reading, be able to keep track of all these crazy names that you're going to see, um, and be able to know where they are in the passage if you have to go back. Again, knowing what abbreviations mean because you are paying attention at other parts um, of, of other parts of the passage. Um, focusing on figures is super important. And anticipating questions before they're even there, you're going to answer them more quickly and that's really important for saving time on the MCAT. So again, this is just something, a method that worked for me. It really helped me decrease my time um, for the biology section in particular. Um, if you guys have any questions or um, even comments on the video, feel free to leave them um, below and I'll try my best to respond. Um, I hope this was helpful. <laughs> if not, no worries. You know, stick to the method that works for you, but this definitely worked for me. So I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.